Look right here, look. It is perhaps the biggest and most stunning fall linked to the Me Too movement so far. Fallout for the Me Too movement. Les Moonves, the longtime chair of CBS, stepped down overnight. More women came forward to accuse him of sexual misconduct. The CEO of CBS, Les Moonves, resigning after new, detailed, and graphic allegations of sexual assault and misconduct from at least 12 women going back more than 30 years. The news making headlines on his own network on his wife's own show, The Talk. As you all know, Julie's husband is in the news. Sharon Osbourne making the announcement that Julie Chen, Moonves' wife of 14 years, was taking a break from hosting duties. And she's taking off time to be with her family. But the show refused to shy away from the news. Women should not feel that they have to carry secrets and burdens and, and lives destroyed. Just because this hits close to home, it doesn't change this story. All women's stories matter, and these women's stories matter. Chen releasing a statement through CBS saying, I will be back soon, and we'll see you Thursday night on Big Brother. Big Brother, Chen's other hosting gig, and just one of the successful shows Moonves was behind. His resume includes some of the biggest hits in TV history. From Friends to Survivor, The Amazing Race, NCIS, The Big Bang Theory. One of the greatest TV programmers of all time. He seemed to have this golden touch. He was also a vocal supporter of the Me Too movement. I think it's important that a company's culture will not allow for this. It's been nearly a year since the birth of the Me Too movement, and dozens of powerful, famous people have been accused of sexual misconduct. So far, only Harvey Weinstein has been charged with a crime. Moonves has denied any allegations of misconduct. He's not a Harvey Weinstein. In the case of Les Moonves, he had an enormous amount of charm. He was great at self-deprecating humor. He was fantastic with the media. Leslie Moonves was a golden boy on Wall Street. He turned that company around. He was considered indispensable to shareholder value at that company. That's why so many people said that he was impossible to shake from his position. The New Yorker's Ronan Farrow has identified 12 women accusing Moonves, ranging from a former veteran TV executive to an assistant to a massage therapist. There's a moment in a body of reporting like this where you have so many women recounting such similar details and you realize this is too much to be a coincidence. One of those women, Phyllis Golden Gottlieb, who worked with Moonves back in the 1980s when they were both executives at Lorimar Television. He said, you want to have lunch? I said, sure. We got into the car, but then I realized it was taking him an awful long time. And finally, I turned my head and he grabbed my head and pushed it all the way down into his penis and, and pushed his penis into my mouth. I said, just take me back. But it was horrible. It was really horrible. But she says the harassment didn't end there. A couple of years later, she alleges Moonves exposed himself. The next day, she claims he got angry because she did not send a fellow executive a work memo. He like turned bright red. And he picked me up, I'm small, picked me up and threw me at the, at the wall and I just sat on the floor and cried. The now 82-year-old did file a criminal complaint with police late last year, but the statute of limitations had expired. It was too late for Phyllis. Having said that, it's never too late to do the right thing. This was something that was really something I just needed to do. I can help other women come out because it's terrible for everybody. Everyone is frightened of the power. Farrow's second New Yorker article also detailing accounts involving allegations of inappropriate behavior during massage therapy. He would ask me to work um, into his genital areas and I was like, I don't do that kind of work. In a statement provided to the New Yorker, Moonves admitted to having consensual relations with three of the women listed in the article, but denied any wrongdoing. The appalling accusations in this article are untrue. Anyone who knows me knows that the person described in this article is not me.
Moonves wrote in part, I don't think that people expected this second story to land quite the way it did. It's so specific, so graphic, and, you know, the behavior described is totally unacceptable. Back in July, when the first round of allegations of sexual misconduct surfaced in The New Yorker, Moonves says, I always understood and respected and abided by the principle that no means no. It almost appeared Moonves would weather the storm, remaining on the job. There were talks that he was negotiating an exit with a very, very generous compensation package, and that was a source of great frustration. The CBS Board of Directors launched an investigation, and according to The New Yorker, behind the scenes began discussing Moonves's departure. But as soon as the second New Yorker article hit yesterday, things changed and fast. A flood of additional women came to me after that first story. They said enough is enough. Within hours, CBS announced that Moonves had left the company. In separate statements provided to The New Yorker, CBS Board of Directors said it is committed to a thorough and independent investigation of the allegations, and that investigation is actively underway. CBS Corporation said it takes these allegations very seriously and called the board's investigation thorough and ongoing. In an SEC filing issued Sunday, CBS said Moonves would continue to perform transition advisory services, receive office services and security services for up to two years, and the network would pay Moonves $120 million if the internal investigation failed to provide grounds for his dismissal. $20 million will also go to organizations supporting the Me Too movement. Moonves maintains he did nothing wrong, continuing in his written statement in response to The New Yorker, the accusations against him are part of a concerted effort by others to destroy my name, my reputation, and my career. Regardless of where Moonves ends up when the dust settles, the aftershocks at his fall may have even more repercussions for what may come. This is the first Fortune 500 CEO to resign amidst Me Too allegations. And this was an individual who was thought to be untouchable because he was so indispensable to billions of dollars of transactions on Wall Street. The fact that there was some motion to hold him to account is, I think, very significant. For Nightline, I'm Eva Pilgrim in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.